Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on a 2023 BMW M4 CSL Frozen Brooklyn Gray. This thing is absolutely amazing, $145,000 sports car. BMW USA brought it to us so that we could clean it up because this thing is going on its press tour all over the country. So on today's episode, we're really gonna be focusing on how to wash, maintain, and protect matte finish paints. Today, on Drive and Protect. It's not gonna get you, Jordan. It's dead, buddy. Oh, here comes a bike. The 2023 BMW M4 CSL, which stands for Competition Sport Lightweight, was first introduced in 1972 as the homologation special for the European Touring Car Championship, also known to BMW enthusiasts as the Batmobile. The new M4 CSL carries on the lightweight tradition and set the fastest lap time at the Nürburgring, solidifying its track weapon status. The rear wheel drive twin turbo three liter inline six has 543 horsepower, pushing the lightweight from zero to 60 in just 3.3 seconds. With all the carbon fiber bits, the rear seat delete, the bird cage engine brace, gigantic carbon ceramic brakes, and of course the matte finished paint, this thing basically is a race car with a radio. However, driving home from the track or pretty much anywhere that's not on a perfectly smooth road will make your teeth rattle out of your head and your back scream in the carbon fiber buckets, especially if you're tall. But damn, is this thing not fast. So pick your poison. Thing. <laughs> now, when it comes to matte paint, a few rules must be followed to keep the matte paint looking like matte paint, as this type of finish is going to require more regular maintenance and timely care because there's no correction. There's no polishing option available as a last resort. The first step before any wash is just to inspect the paint to see where pre-soaking with a solvent or a degreaser like Titan 12 might be necessary prior to your rinse. Since the matte paint can't be polished, it's also not a great idea to rub the paint vigorously in the effort to remove stubborn stains either. So it's best to rely on chemical cleaning versus mechanical or abrasive cleaning when working on matte paint. Step one is to rinse as much of the dirt off as possible with no more than 1200 PSI, about 12 inches away from the paint and 45 degree angle tip if you're using a pressure washer. Next, I use Brute Wheel Soap in the Soap Cannon, which is stronger than foam soap and it won't leave behind any noticeable shine. So it's perfect for matte paint. I spray it on there and let it dwell for a few minutes. Okay, at this point, we've foamed the paint down. You wanna let it sit for four or five minutes, let it dwell and kind of pull all the oils off the paint. While that's sitting there, it's a good idea to take your wash bucket, put it in your slop sink, run your hand in there and feel if there's any contamination on the sides. There's a little bit here from previous washes. Mix that up, kind of swoosh it around and get it out. In other words, have a very clean bucket. When you're working on matte finished paints, there's really no margin for error. If you make any little scratch on there, you can't polish it out. So having your bucket super clean, your towel brand new, it's gonna mean the world of a difference on a matte finished car. For the wash, I'm using a freshly laundered microfiber towel that has a thicker pile to get into the valleys of the rough matte surface. I do this in straight lines, no circles, and with little to no downward pressure. As you guys know, I am pretty particular about my cars, my business, and of course my health, but none of this is possible if I can't get out of bed in the morning because I feel tired or I'm just worn out from the day. So for me, I start the day with my morning ritual, which is a nutritional supplement that supports my immunity because whether I'm working on a supercar like this one here or a disaster makeover, my body is burning fuel all day. So what I put in it in the morning is critical. AG1 contains critical nutrients to keep detailers and other high-performing individuals in the zone by supporting your brain, bolstering the digestive process, and vital adaptogens for adrenal health to help manage those days of burnout and overworking that is just part of our daily lives these days. Now what's really cool is each scoop of AG1 is nine health products in one, giving you a multivitamin, minerals, probiotic, and way more. Now tap the link and get a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs 
bags for free with your first purchase. Remember, you can't put a price tag on your own health. For now, let's get back to the M4. Unlike typical shiny paint, which is relatively smooth and easy to clean because your coating can help with the self-cleaning characteristics, matte paint, on the other hand, its surface has peaks and valleys to catch the light, creating a duller reflection and, by default, becomes grippier or better at holding the dirt that gets trapped inside those valleys. After the wash, rinse again. If stubborn stains remain, use a stronger solvent like Rapid Remover, spray it on a microfiber towel, and then gently dab the area until it's removed. With the paint still wet after your rinse and for regular maintenance washes, spray Reflex Pro Top Coat over the wet surface and allow it to dwell for about two minutes. Afterwards, gently rinse to spread the maintenance coating around the paint and into the jams, etc., with your pressure washer, and then notice how easily the water self-cleans off the paint. It's really cool. Afterwards, follow up by drying with Hydrate or Hydrate Pro, whatever you prefer, on a microfiber towel and a master blaster. First, soak your clean microfiber towel and then apply a few squirts of Hydrate. Having as much lubrication and protection added during this process is key to avoiding staining and UV fading on matte finishes. To apply a coating, first wipe the paint in a 50-50 mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. With your gloves and mask on, apply Reflex Pro 2 to a microfiber applicator and apply in straight line motions with light downward pressure in an inconspicuous spot first to make sure you're happy with the finish. As you can see, it goes on smooth, then allow it to cure for about a minute or two just like you normally would, then gently remove. And the shininess or the lack of gloss is exactly as it was before the coating was applied, but now it's actually protected. I'd argue that the depth and tone is deeper and better looking, but again, that's my opinion. Because there were only one or two areas that could be and definitely needed to be polished, I did it quickly while the coating was curing with a one inch pad on the piano black grill. When I was done, you can see little dots everywhere. Now those aren't scratches, but those are thousands of little sand blasting chips common on a car that sees a lot of track use. For impact protection, PPF is ideal. Polishing is not gonna remove those little thousands of what we call buckshot. They're just not gonna come out. Once done, I coated the massive calipers in Gillet wheel coating because of the intense heat and the abuse they will surely see again on the track. While everything was curing on the car, I cleaned the wheels. And in terms of intricate wheels, these are right up there. They have 30 different pockets that need to be cleaned individually. So allocate enough time in your cleaning process to play with each one of them. As you guys know, BMW is notorious for crazy brake dust. Again, these are carbon ceramics, but still I think there's gonna be brake dust. There's 30 different pockets and track use. This all equals cleaning weekly and probably a monthly chiropractor visit. The inside was pretty easy. It needed a vacuuming and a healthy wipe down with lather on the door and the center console. Now, if you notice, there's no floor mat in the car. I didn't take it out before I shot this. There was nothing in it when it came. And the reason, number one, is it avoids getting bunched up on the track. Okay, cool. But along with the removal of the rear interior lights and automatic climate control, it saves a whopping eight pounds off the car. So these people are really focused on weight saving. Clearly, this is a race car with a license plate attached. For the steering wheel, I used shag and the seam and stitch brush to get a few hand stains out of the Alcantara without damaging the fibers in the process. Okay. 
I clean the glass with Obey, scrub pad, towels, and a squeegee to remove the new car window grime due to the interior plastics gassing out. Then I added some tire shine to the Pilot Sport Cup 2s to reduce any traction that I may have had on the street. Mom, I'm just kidding if you're watching. That was just for the photo shoot outside. Relax, everything's fine. I love you. With the matte paint now clean and protected, Ooh. it was time to see what all the hype was about on the road. Oh, baby. I think <laughs> this thing being 200 pounds less. Holy jeez, Louise! Oh, here comes a bike. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> oh, there's a bike behind us that is really on our tail right now. That's about the only thing that's going to keep up with you on this. Ah. Oh. You know when you get those chills down your spine? This is the one that does it. Uh, I'm having trouble swallowing. <laughs> See, now when it comes to comfort, this is probably the least comfortable vehicle I've ever been in my life. It is a track car that goes on the street. I would change the tires immediately because, oh my gosh, you can't get any traction. Drive this in the rain, I can't even fathom what that's like. But on the track, probably absolutely amazing. These seats, however, I would classify them as torture devices. They are crunched over and for big people, oh my gosh, I can go probably go five, six miles and my back is absolutely excruciating. However, track car, so totally makes sense. I can imagine with some harnesses on here at 140 miles an hour, probably feels pretty good. Going to get groceries, not so much. Now, one of the most common questions I receive about matte finished paints is what do you do after it's been protected? And let's say you go for a drive just like we did, 30, 40 miles. It's not that dirty. How do I maintain it afterwards? So there's really kind of two options that I look at. The first one is power washing the whole thing down and then drying it with hydrate. That's usually when it's sort of in between dirty, meaning if it's fully dirty, I do a full wash. If it's in between, I do a power wash hydrate. And if it's dirty like this, where there's a little bit of spit up, you know, we had a good time here. I'll take frothy. Lay some down like this. Now again, this is just a lubricant. Come in and gently scoop it up. Look at that, gone, it's all in there. Flip it over, gently scoop it up. And it's not gonna leave any waxes or anything behind. And when you're done, it's perfectly clean. It takes you a few minutes, but the idea is you're using a ton of lubrication. Again, you have no room, no margin of error when you have matte finish paints. You cannot scratch the paint. So the more lubrication, the better. If you have access to water and you wanna just power wash it, totally cool with that. But if you're in an apartment, you're in a drought area, frothy is the way to go. Now check this out. You can see there's a little bit of frothy stuck in these seams here. Now, because we are using this without water in the absence of a hose, that kind of thing that would actually flush this out. One of the cool parts about frothy is in about two to three minutes, this right here, is actually gonna evaporate, so it's not a big deal. If you see that, wipe it as best you can, leave it alone, a couple minutes, it'll be gone. Well guys, there you have it. That's how you clean and protect matte finish paint on a vehicle or a motorcycle. Of course, if you have any questions, you know where to find me, Larry at AmmoNYC.com. Be sure to subscribe. Next week, we have a yellow Lamborghini Countach going up for sale at carsandbids.com. You're not gonna wanna miss that one. See you guys next time.